uh, in the previous class, we learned about this uh, categorization of the what we call metal, ceramic, polymer, composite, and all the advanced material. The one that's in the outside circle here, we call it advanced material, which is the material that used for high end uh, application, lah. Advanced material. And I have mentioned before that in this course, you will learn mostly about this one, two, three, four metal, ceramic, polymer, and composite. We will not go much on nanomaterial. We, we, can, we will learn a little bit about nanomaterial, but not much about biomaterial, semiconductor, and smart material lah, because it's too much. Lah. This course is only for introduction. Okay, uh, where we want to start lah, today? Okay, so let's say you have this uh, base material. You have metal, ceramic, and polymer, and let's say one day you are graduating and you build a company. You want to build something, a new material that fit a certain purpose. So what is your guideline? Because you know you can use metal, ceramic, polymer, composite, a basis uh, for all structural engineering solid. But then you want to create, let's say you want to create what? You want to create, let's say you, you are a chemical engineer, maybe you are uh, building a company, uh, a company that manufacture a reactor. It's like a... Uh, the, the stir tank reactor, basically uh, a place where you can put something and make a chemical reaction inside. Lah. You will have one uh, course named chemical reaction, chemical reactor design and so on. So basically this is a reactor. So you want to sort of like to, uh, to mix uh, the chemical that is very corrosive. Eh? The chemical that is very corrosive, let's say you have uh, the, the acid and also some alkali and so on. So your task as an engineer in this new company is that you want to create this, uh, what we call, this, uh, the reactor in such a way your, what we call, your, your reactor will not be uh, rusty over time. Okay? So what is your guideline? Because you know you can use metal, you can also use ceramic, you can also maybe use polymer because there are polymer that is uh, resistant to this chemical also. They are ceramic that is resistant to chemical. They are also metal that is resistant to chemical. So you have this uh, choice. So what is your guideline here? Previously, uh, before the modern engineering come, what people do, uh, especially uh, say like before science uh, flourished, lah, what people did is that they just take whatever available around them. For example, they see a metal there, they take that and then they mold into this uh, shape. But nowadays, uh, they have this, what we call, um, we call it CPMS. CPM, CPMS, Central, Central Paradigm, Paradigm of, of Material Science. Lah. Material, Material Science, Science. So basically, this CPMS is like a guideline, lah, like a protocol for the, not protocol, but basically but guideline for the any engineer when they want to create a new uh, material. Lah. So what is this CPMS? CPMS, they say that they are interrelationship between the, what we call the structure, the properties, the performance, and also the uh, process. So they start CPMS like this. You have processing here, processing, processing, and then you have a structure here, structure, and then you have uh, what we call the uh, properties, properties, and then you have the what we call the performance, performance, performance. Okay, so basically it's a linear relationship. Like this. So you know about properties. This is the properties. Okay? This is the properties. Me mechanical, magnetic, thermal, electrical, detrative, and optical. Okay? So that is properties. So let me find over madam. Okay. So that is properties. So these properties, let's say you want this uh, material to be uh, very corrosive, uh, corrosion resistant. So you want that properties of that. Okay, you want the, the properties of corrosion resistance. So these properties of corrosion resistance is, uh, is intimately linked with the structure. The structure here, the structure of the material itself can be uh, from, the structure can be from 
subatomic subatomic meaning that you deal with the like thing like electron and also the interaction interaction with nu color lain lah let me blue lah subatomic for example the like electron and also the relation relationship with nuclei with nuclei nuclei i mean the nucleus of the electron nuclei nuclei and also you can have when we talk about structure what does it mean eh? meaning that the 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 engineer or the scientist try to probe into this thing lah subatomic or atomic okay atomic is basically when the engineer try to look how the atom arrange how the atom arrangement inside the the material itself and then what else atomic and then nanostructure nanostructure to structure uh, it's basically the aggregate of atom aggregate aggregate of uh, cluster cluster or aggregate of cluster of uh, atom uh, bundled together and then you have also macrostructure uh, microstructure micro structure this is where you you deal with the crystal later on we we will uh, deal a little bit about crystal lah. Uh, not crystal i think uh, uh, apa ada tak ni okay so this basically when you can observe something observation observation under microscope microscope so basically uh, when you talk about microstructure is basically you deal something from micrometer to millimeter like that and then lastly is about macro structure lah macro macro structure structure so basically this is when uh, you deal with the something that you can see with the naked eyes lah naked eyes okay normally from mm to the uh, whatever lah to the bulk 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 thing so basically, uh, this uh, paradigm, they said that the properties that you want is intimately related to whatever here, okay, to whatever here. And this structure is intimately related to how you process the stuff, the, the processing thing. So for example, this, what is hijau? Where is green? Oh, green. So uh, this thing, the structure is intimately related with the processing method also the way how you process the stuff and then all these things process structure and properties will give you the performance that you need so this is basically what we call the central paradigm of uh, what we call material science for you maybe this is, seems like quite normal quite like what we call quite like people take it for granted because of, of course lah properties related to structure of course lah structure related how you process but long time ago remember a uh, human doesn't have these uh, tools to look under the structure. They don't have microscope, so how they do that? So uh, the an your ancestor, I always cannot pronounce this ancestor, ancestor, whatever lah. Your 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 old old uh, ancestor, they don't have tool to look into this. So what they do is that they just try to to try an error. For example, to make a sword, eh? to make a sword like this, to make a sword like this. Previously. Uh, what they do is that they have this skillful smith. Eh? They have a skillful smith that uh, smith, apa? Metal smith, apa? Blacksmith, ha, blacksmith. I don't know why it's black. Blacksmith, okay. What they do is that they, they, they pass the knowledge, the skill on the generation. Okay. Because the way, because metal, one of the uh, characteristics of metal, you make metal strong by heating it. By heating it. That's one uh, uh, thing about metal lah. You can make a uh, metal strong by heating, continuously heating it. So, in order to make a sharp uh, blade or sharp uh, sword, uh, it's not easy eh? because when you make sword uh, using metal, the metal can also be brittle. When you try to go for war, this thing will sort of like clash with another sword, another sword. So, this will chip here. So, the purpose of blacksmith to find the correct skill to create the sword that is hard, somehow hard here. This they want hard here, the hard metal. But here they don't want so hard. They want it ductile, meaning that have some elasticity. 
So when you try to sort of like this, they, they cannot chip, they don't chip lah. Um, so what happened before, they just pass the skill, knowledge. Uh, knowledge is more like more about like the skill, how to hammer this thing, but they don't know about all this thing. Okay? So that's why it's more like a trade secret long time ago. So we know that the, uh, the Persian, they have this Damascus, the Damascus steel, which is so sharp. So the way, so but the knowledge for that, how to make that, uh, is lost. So people nowadays try to, to what we call to recreate that thing, the Damascus steel, uh, but still uh, not be able lah. So that is skill that is uh, passed to generation by generation. But this nowadays is like this. We have a tools to look into the structure, and we know that this structure you can sort of like change it by look by. Change how you process the thing. For example, ah, uh, for example, let's say I have this thing, ah, uh, uh, let's say I have, ah, uh, lama, apa ni? I have this, apa ni? Apa ni nadra? You panggil apa ni? Huh? Hey, kole, kan? Okay, so I have to almost uh, look like a similar kole. Dan bahasa Inggeris apa? Container, ah, uh, whatever. But it look like it's made from steel, right? But it's two different things. Okay? Because depending on how the atom inside this, uh, what we call, um, range or whatever uh, material they add, this one, they, this is magnet, uh, this magnet, uh, doesn't have magnetic properties. This have magnetic properties. Both, are that, both of them are stainless steel. Because of course, when you want to do something for foot grade, you need something stainless steel. If not, the corrosion happen and then you ingest the rust lah. So this seems like, I mean, you might say that uh, this is just making this, uh, what we call, uh, magnet and magnetic and this non-magnetic. But the very reason you make this magnetic have implication on the performance or on the, what we call, on the end use later on. For example, have you heard before about this thing? Uh, I think I just... Ah, tak payahlah kertas ni. Malah. Induction cooker. For example, uh, siapa kat rumah ada benda ni? Eh, lambatnya. Siapa kat rumah ada benda ni? Induction cooker. Uh, siapa kat rumah ada ni? Ataupun, uh, who at home have a kitchen that doesn't use gas? Nowadays, uh, previously people use gas, right? But nowadays, there are some uh, modern uh, home, they don't use gas. They use electricity. So, anyone here? I've used this before. Siapa? Nah, tak tahu. Alif. Siapa nama you? Farah, Ashikin. You lah, you. Huh. Sophia. Saya, saya, Adeline, saya susah nak ni. Okay, uh, Nisa also have this, right? So, this thing only work if you use this. It doesn't work with this. If you, if you take this, even though it seems same, if you take this, you put there, and you try to on it. See, I on this thing. It doesn't work. It will not uh, transfer this uh, electromagnetic thing uh, because it worked by the electromagnetic radiation. So it will not transfer the heat to this lah. It's not heat. It's I mean the radiation to this. So making that you cannot cook this thing, cook with this thing lah. Hit the water or whatever. But you can with this. Seems similar. If you go to the grocery, you will find this thing. You cannot really see the difference unless you test with the magnet. That's why people, when they want to buy a cookware for the uh, this induction cooker, they, they normally they bring a magnet lah to just click there, click there, click there, eh, click there, plug, click sini, so they know that this work with that. And also, uh, you see uh, normally for some cookware, for example, tefal, 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 some to, tefal they have this what we call. They have this, you cannot see lah, but basically uh, some tefal, most of the tefal cannot be cooked on this uh, induction uh, kitchen. But some tefal can, more expensive lah, they will put the, the here, they put induction. Uh, induction what? Tefal induction, let me put. Tefal. So, meaning to say that, um, what? Even though it look more or less the same, but it's totally different lah. So where is the induction? So normally they have the 
the the the the what you call the the logo that say that is uh, capable to be used in induction lah. Okay, but most of the most of uh, what we call uh, cookware, they are not most of the stainless steel is not a magnetic. Okay, most stainless steel it's like this. They have some magnetic, but it's very 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 little lah. So that is what how this uh, properties will affect the performance. When you want to sell something, it depends on the structure. And how they make it magnetic is by changing the structure inside the steel there. And how that? By changing the way how they process. So that is CPMS, central paradigm of, of what? Of material science. Okay. Senang ke? <laughs> anyway, uh, one more thing, okay? Uh, last time we talked about smart material, right? Uh, uh, we talked also about nano material, eh? Just, just to, uh, to, to what we call? To relate this. Still, this thing is uh, true for all this thing, eh? Not only for metal, but for all, eh? uh, For example, this is example of graphene. This is graphene. Pass, pass around. This is graphene, eh? Inside this uh, graphene. So you see here, uh, as I said, graphene is under nano material. Eh? Graphene is under nano material. This you have a graphene. You might say, if graphene is so small, then why can I see this thing, right? Because this is the aggregate of graphene. Okay, they are aggregate of graphene. But the graphene itself is basically like this. Eh? You know graphene, right? Anyone? Macam mana bentuk graphene Farah? Pernah tembak? Tak pernah. Tak pernah dengar graphene. Graphene, pernah dengar graphene? Graphene tu apa? Ha, graphene tu apa? Pernah dengar? Pernah? Pernah dengar, tapi graphene tu apa? Oh, Dengar-dengar je, tak apa, tak apa. Tak apa, saya buka sini, graphene. Graphene, eh? graphene. Okay, so this is a, a example of graphene. So the structure of graphene lah. So whatever you pass uh, along that, that is graphene. So basically, graphene is coming from graphite. You know graphite, you have the, the pencil here. So that is graphite. So basically, graphene, graphite, the, the graphite itself is basically uh, the layer of this chicken wire. I call it chicken wire because it's like chicken wire lah. You know chicken wire? Chicken wire. Saya cakap, if I say something, but if you don't understand, just raise what is apa yang saya merepek. Eh? Kalau tak, saya pun tak faham apa dia saya cakap. Chicken wire. Chicken wire. Mana chicken wire? Ha, tu. Nampak chicken wire? So, the wire that people use to buat reban lah. Maksudnya, ha, ni chicken wire. So, graphene structure more or less like that. That's why I say chicken wire. Okay. So, it's like that. But, for graphite, they have more of this. They have layer, 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 same, same layer lah. Meaning the same thing on top of each other. Okay, that's why when you write with the pencil, what you see, saya tak ada pencil lah pula. Ada pencil? Siapa ada pencil? Ada, pencil. Pen, pencil. Ha, pencil. Yeah. Merah. Okay, so this is not lead lah. Even though people say uh, pencil lead, but lead is totally different thing. If you go to PT table, P table, P table, mana P table? Okay, P table. So the lead, where is lead? Where is lead? Where is lead? Ha, huh. mana lead? Huh. Lead is apa? Huh. So this is lead, ah. Huh? Lead is here. Graphite inside uh, nadra pen cell. This thing, this one, this one, is carbon. So the carbon inside this is basically uh, that's why we learn about structure. The carbon inside this, they are on top each other, stacking one by one layer, one layer each other. When I write on the paste paper, let's say I paper here, I write something, let's say I put nadra. Eh, you don't nadra, you rauda. 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 Okay. So when I write rauda here, what, what happened is that I left because this thing slide. The graphite layer, uh, the, the, this layer, slide each other. That's why you can see leftover here. That's why people also use this thing 
as a lubricant. For example, let's say your your apa? your padlock is stuck. You can take this thing and then you grind it. You get the powder and you use the powder to open the lock lah. For example, let's say you have this uh, lock like this. It's stuck, so you can put the 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 powdered graphite there because one of the properties of graphite is that it's uh, what we call Rich. friction uh, is have less friction because it can slide each other. So people use it as a lubricant lah to do that. Okay, so that's graphite. Graphene is basically instead of this, you take only one layer of that. Okay, you the way how people found graphene is just very simple. They just take uh, the cello tape. They put there, it's not this line, not pencil lah, but other block of uh, graphite. And then they just peel it. Peel, and then peel again, peel again, peel again. So for example, let's say this is graphite. This, uh, this uh, table is graphite. Graphite, stone, whatever. So I have the solid tape. I, I put on top like that, like that. And then I got a lot of graphite. So in order to make it small, uh, thinner and thinner, I do like this. And open back. No, no, I do like this. I get graphite here, right? And then I take another, what you call, another tape. I put like this, and then again and again and again and again. So then you get the, until one point, you get only one atom thick. Because if you see the graphite, this is only one atom thick. This, okay, one atom thick. Okay, one atom thick. And then because of that, those who are discovered this thing got the Nobel Prize. So easy je, nak dapat Nobel Prize. Main dengan pencil je. So basically, that is the way how graphene is discovered, and graphene they got Nobel Prize in what? Huh? The, the 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 researcher in Manchester University, Jim and whatever the name, they got the Nobel Prize for not find, not getting the graphite, but investigating the graphite, because everyone can do that, right? Can do a pill, um, for example, graphene, cellulite. Huh? Cellotape. Is it? Uh, so that's the way the way they do it. How to make graphene with a pencil. So it basically that's the way lah. How they do it. So when they investigate the thing, they found that this graphene, uh, graphene, uh, because it's only one layer, they have no interaction in bond interaction between the uh, adjacent layer. Then the electron can flow very fast across this across this. Uh, what we call across the, the plane here. So later, after the mid-break, lah, we will discuss about that electricity and so on. But just give to the idea, the graphite and the graphene, even though it comes from the same material, but it behaves totally different. Okay. Um, and also, you know that this thing, if let's say I try to change it into uh, tetrahedral, Configuration, this is, we call it planar lah. One layer, if you change it into tetrahedral thing, then you get this uh, diamond lah. Diamond structure. Okay, so you can see this thing. Same thing, there's also carbon. But the way how they arrange in the atom is different. And you see like this, right? it's not like chicken wire, right? Graphene, graphite, like chicken wire, but uh, what you call this... Uh, Diamond, this is from diamond, it's like that. So the same carbon origin, but you get three different things. Diamond, graphite, and graphene. Okay, thank you. So that's uh, how important this uh, ni lah. So that's how, in order to get that thing, the different thing, you need to learn about the structure lah, structures, and only then you can get the properties uh, that you desire. For example, graphene, one of the properties is very strong and also it also what we call can conduct electricity very fast okay graphite also can conduct electricity but very slow lah uh, not very slow but not as fast as graphene so you see structure and properties relate to each other and how this you get that structure is by processing lah by how you process and so on uh, we talk about nanomaterial let's see also this smart material lah um, Kita nampak kat sini. Siapa seorang sini? Farah sini lah. Datang tu. Nak suruh dia pegang ni. Sebab saya tak saya nak sambung dengan kamera. Datang sini. Datang ni siapa? Tak apa. Saya tak makan orang. Pegang. Untuk uh, saya nak you uh, hold this thing. 
supaya saya boleh project the thing lah because this thing I want to do it so that you can see if not Bashir cannot see it right if I do something here Bashir cannot see so that's why I let me open the wait ah let me open the camera ha ah, okey aduh benar ke sana sini eh sini lah sini lah sini lah sini lah okey eh. sini lah okey in front of you mana ni mana ni okey so you tengok juga sini you you duduk you, du you bukan duduk lah you tengok juga sebab saya supaya you boleh nampak macam mana supaya you tak shock sendiri tak, tak gambar ha, supaya nampak ha, biar tu okey apa yang you nampak ni adalah paper clip eh paper clip takkan tak tahu <laughs> paper clip this also paper clip eh this also paper clip also okey there are two paper clip eh there are two paper clip so i want to show about smart material let's say this paper clip i try to bend it uh, I ask you to bend lah. Itu on then you kata saya tipu pula. So saya bend lah. Dia bend je lah. Bend, bend je. Bend je. So bend whatever you want. How, whatever way you want. Okay. So I bend this thing. I got this thing. Okay. Come here. Okay. So you see tak bend sangat ni. Bend lagi. Bend lagi, bend lagi, bend lagi. So I bend. So I have two things lah. So one is, yeah, bend, bend and bend lah. So I have the uh fire here the source of temperature if i try to do here okay nothing happen right nothing happen okay nothing happen of course lah if something happen you everyone will buy the paper clip but here ah here you see it coming back to what we call to original shape so the, the, it has what we call the memory what we call the the memory uh, characteristic there. This still not lah. Okay, if you look here, I'm using what? I'm using uh, this ceramic. One of the properties of ceramic is can what we call can this resist the temperature. It's good in resisting temperature. That's why I put ceramic. If I put here, then uh, terbakar up uh, So that's also the reason that thing. And if you see here, they are metal. So the metal is good also. Uh, compared to the ceramic but ceramic even though it's good in resisting the temperature it's brittle but this metal uh, is can resist the temperature but also is can easily malleable mean that people can just create a hole and so on it's much easier lah than ceramic that's why people use metal to make this thing lah if you see this thing this polymer because if everything is metal it's expensive so that's the way how uh, thing goes lah okay so that is basically the example of smart material. One of the example they have the shape memory. So how they do this is basically by changing the structure inside by using uh, some uh, of the what we call uh, at uh, they they play around with the atom and so on lah. Okay, thank you, Farah. Okay, so that is you. That's you. Let me close this thing first. Let me close this thing first. So that you will not okay. So that is basically by you lah. Okay. So that's basically the example of smart material. Semiconductor is the one that inside your your phone. The transistor, eh? the transistor that you see before biomaterial like implant or whatever thing. Okay. So any question on this CPMS? Any question on CPMS? Uh, we will learn uh, in more detail uh, about uh, how the structure relate to the properties when we are looking at the fundamental after the mid break, uh, after the uh, what call after the after raya lah, after raya. Because now, before raya, my plan is just to go in generic uh, on metal, ceramic, polymer, composite. After mid break, we go to the fundamental, how electricity is conducted, why this thing can conduct electricity, why this can conduct uh, heat better than than what we call than polymer and so on so that is the fundamental part lah so it's much better for me to explain that later for example let's say i want to talk about magnetic eh? magnetic of course this uh, that thing the steel can be magnetic but there are also ceramic polymer can also be made magnetic so if i want to talk about magnetic when i discuss metal 
And then I need to retalk again about ceramic when I come to the ceramic. So it's quite uh, again and again. Lah. So that's why all these properties, some of the detail I will explain later. Lah. Okay, so that is the thing. Uh, so that is CPMS, the approach uh, for modern engineering, how nowadays people try to, what we call, to create a new thing, they, they go to this approach. Lah. Okay, um, so now, let's say now there are, there are a lot of available material around us. Huh? Around us, there are a lot of uh, available material around us. All of them seems, let's say, uh, you have like uh, 100 material in front of you. And then you want to make this, uh, what we call, the reactor skin or body. You have 100 in front of you, all of them is more or less good, lah, more or less good and can be done can be used for that, this uh, reactor. How do you choose then? How do you choose then? How do you choose? What we call how, how you have the option of material, but then how engineer choose which one is the best? This is just the approach. But how actually the engineer choose, let's say there are two or three material that is equally good, equally fit the function. Uh, you want the, the thing is magnetized, then every, all the three is also magnetized. So how then you choose which material you want, you will use for the production, A, B, or C. So that also the, the question that engineers face when they deal with material. Not only they need to know about the structure, but once they know about the structure also, once this, they satisfy all of these things, they still need to make a decision. Let's say there are three good choice of material, which one they want to go through? So that's also some of the question lah, uh, the engineer need to face lah. So uh, there are three. Oh no, my name, Madam Sayi mana? Madam, over oh, So basically, I put here lah. So there is three basis lah in order to select the material. The first one is characterization lah. Characterization, meaning that you need to find uh, all the material must satisfy the characteristic that you want lah. Uh, like I said before, the three material in front of you, A, B, C, all is good. So meaning that it's past this characterization test. Characterization is basically simply what we call, simply what we call, uh, what is the properties required. The characterization here is basically the properties required. Properties Required lah, required. Meaning that if let's say this stainless steel require the corrosion, corrosion resistant, then it need to pass that uh, characterization test for corrosion resistant. So let's say this all A, B, and C pass that thing. So what is the next uh, what we call next decision tree that the engineer can make? So the second step after all that pass, the second step is basically looking at the deterioration. Deter duration of material, meaning that how the material will degrade over time. For example, of this thing, let's say the, they want to make from metal. Eh? Let's say you, want, you have material A, material B, material B, and material C to make this skin of reactor. And all of them pass the characterization test. All the properties is what you want. They can give the properties that you want. And then you go to number, this number one. Let's say this number one, let's say pass. Number one is pass. Can you see? Uh, Adi eh? Adi eh? Hazik. Adi mana Adi? Tak datang? Oh, Adi dah drop dah. Adi tak datang? Okay. So this is uh, number one. Let's say you pass. And number two, let's say now you have the detrusion of material. Maybe A and B can withstand the high temperature without changing its mechanical properties because sometimes uh, even the metal, if you try to heat it so high, the strength of the metal can be weakened. Okay? So maybe A and B pass this test and C doesn't pass. Still, you have two A and B choice, the choice, there are two choice. So at the end of the day, it comes to the third, uh, what you call, third, third test, which is the price, uh, the economic. economic. Uh, the deterioration of material is, the, is basically how the material, uh, what we call, um, uh, how the material deteriorate over service time. Lah. For example, you want to use this, let's say you want to use this for 10 years. 
So A and B pass, but C doesn't pass the test. Meaning that the material does, cannot sustain for even one year in service. So after that pass, the last criteria that need to be tested is the economic. Maybe A and B is good, but A, in order to create A, to use to create this thing using material A, is very expensive. Um, maybe the metal that they use is so unique, so so what you call so so unique lah, so unique, so that is very rare to be found. Uh, the ma not many manufacturer uh, what you call Manufac uh, fabricate this metal, so that's also one of the uh, factor lah. So last uh, test or last uh, decision tree is always the economic lah. How this is what we call uh, uh, what we what we say? How this is reflect the reality? Because at the end of the day, you want to sell. Okay, you want to sell this thing. If you you create like the best from the best material, but then that best method make you price this uh, reactor so high, nobody will buy it. So the economic is the last, uh, no, typically not the last. Usually the economic is the, the overriding factor for all of this. As life, uh, as in life, money is everything like, no. All right. <laughs> so, but the economic, that typically the overriding factor. Lah. That's why you buy things from China and you buy things from the uh, German, two same thing like say car, but uh, they might you know, from the China they might use uh, the very low quality metal. Uh, those who are manufactured in maybe another region they use better quality uh, material. So yeah, Pe people can people always buy from China because of this cheap. Okay, it's a money thing. So that is the basically the what we call uh, when you have the option eh, when you have the option to select eh, when you have the option when you have the option how to select this is the three this is a guideline okay okay yeah panas lah panas eh? panas middle tak panas dah <laughs> sejuk lah eh? okay okay so now uh, let's talk a little bit about metal lah. Let's talk about a little bit about metal. Eh? Uh, the one that you, the one that I give you last time, this thing, this thing, uh, that thing, eh? I already passed to you. Eh? This is metal. Lah. It's metal. Let me padam dulu. The one that I give you last time is a metal. Oh, by the way, the, the one that I show you is not bronze. Eh? I say that's bronze. That's not bronze. That is brass. This one. Last time I show you copper or bronze, right? This, uh, this is which is copper. This is copper. This is copper. This thing is brass. B R A S S. Dalam bahasa Melayu apa? Ain? Dalam bahasa Melayu apa ni? Brass. Dalam bahasa Melayu. Brass apa? Tembaga. 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 Bronze. Gangsa. Okay. It's two different thing. Because bronze, the color for bronze is not like this. Color for bronze is like is reddish, like red, a little bit lah. It's like more or less like this bronze. Okay, kalau you dapat pingat gangsa, bukan macam ni, ni gold. Kan? Pingat gangsa you dapat macam ni, the dull sikit. Tapi ni copper, ni copper lah. Tapi color dia macam bronze. Okay, so gangsa or bronze is like that. It's basically combination of copper and... Zinc, eh, copper and apa? Nadra? Copper and tin. Okay, let me draw lah because kalau saya cakap, mungkin kau tak dapat tangkap. So, baru saya tulis lah. Eh. Oh, patut saya nampak tulisan macam lain macam cantik. <laughs> Bukan tulisan saya. Terkejut juga tadi. Tiba. Okay, anyway. So, we start, uh, previous class also we said that the, the, the what we call, uh, before we come uh, bronze and metal, we say before that uh, the history, the early civilization is based on material. We start with the Stone Age, Stone Age, and then we go to the Bronze Age, Bronze Age, and then we go to the Iron Age, Iron Age. Okay, before Bronze Age, you have Stone Age, eh? Stone Age, the Stone Age. 
Okay, don't age. Okay, uh, in the absence of metal, uh, our ancestor, ancestor, whatever lah, they rely on stone or wood to create a tools. Okay, tool is something that can be tool is something that can be used to overcome human limitation. For example, lah, let's say this. This apa? Apa ni? Meja. Wood. Eh? Let's say I want to make a... Uh, apa yang panggil? I want to... Bukan scratch. Pahat apa pahat? Pahat apa pahat? I want to... I want to what? Carpenting. <laughs> I want to... Let's say like I want to make a shape out of this. Right? Let's say I want to make a like... Um, uh, instead of like this, I want to make a shape uh, cut from here. So with your body, uh, with your body, which part of your body can do that? Let's say I want to make like a hole here, like a hole here, hole or make a shape here. Like like I want to cut, mana sebab ni? I want to cut the table in such a way that this table. I want to cut this instead of like this. I want to cut this like this. Huh. Which board, which material, which part in your body capable to do that? Huh? Gigi, ha? Gigi, habis <laughs> gigi you nanti. So, so that's, uh, even gigi also is not so uh, strong lah. I mean, of course, uh, if you take care of your teeth, then you can lah. But it's very difficult also to do that lah, to cut the thing. So that's why human need tool. So previously, people use stone as a tool. So they use, uh, typically they use flint, wood, or what lah. Apa lagi? Bone, ha. using bone like that. Okay, so typically they people use this lah. Flint here is basically just a rock, lah. just a rock, just a typical rock, and then you just cut it. Let's say you have this uh, taufik, taufik, and then this is the rock. Eh, besar sangat, kecil sangat taufik. Okay, so taufik hold the rock, and then to make a flint is basically taufik have another rock, small rock here, and they just knock like that. When you knock like that, the rock will crack. And then it create like sort of like a uh, sharp edge lah. So this sharp edge, sharp edge is one of the most important thing, especially when you lost in the jungle. The sharp edge, anything that is sharp in the edge is one of the most valuable thing. Because with the sharp edge, what you can do, you can do a lot of things. If this is a rock, you can use it to make fire because you can do friction lah. You can... Baca, butch, baca, baca, butcher, whatever, butcher, I mean, sembelih, animal. Okay, you baca animal, you can also uh, cut tree, cut tree, cut or whatever thing. So, the sharp edge is one of the requirement, like most of the important thing when you lost in the jungle and so on. So, in our early age, they use this flint. So, in order to cut this rock, whatever this thing, you you cannot use any rock lah. You need to use rock that is homogeneous, because if you use something like uh, what we call atak rumah apa? Yeah, zinc tu. Atak yang daripada daripada ni daripada batu. Apa tu? Slit, slit. Ah, uh, slit. Atak batu. Uh, Malaysia maybe you don't see lah, but uh, you can see this uh, atak batu in uh, uh, in England in whatever. So you have this flint. So you use if you use this to make a flint, this is slit ah. You cannot use this to make a uh, this thing because this they have the preference. If you look here, they have sort of like layer by layer right, like a graphene. So they have like the character of the stone. They are anistro uh, and I isotropic character character meaning that. They have one preference uh, in terms of direction. So if you try to sort of like, sh sh not shake, I mean like hit this uh, slate, we call it slate, you get like another slate, meaning that the layer lah, another layer. So you don't want to have layer. For example, you see the layer, right? So typically in order to make this, you just hit this, hit here, and then you get uh, another slate. So in order to make the flint, where it's sharp, you need something that is homogeneous lah, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous in texture, homogeneous in texture, and also isotropic lah, meaning that 
isotropic. Uh, the term here will be used later on when we deal with the structure, lah, metal and so on. So that's why I introduced the, the term here. The isotropic here meaning that all this is homogeneous. For example, let's say, we oh, dah jatuh dah semua ni. Uh, lah. So let's say I have, so let's say the flint. So flint is this. Saya cakap-cakap nanti kalau tak faham benda saya cakap ni. Ah tu flint eh. Ni flint. Flint ah. Dia macam orang oh, panggil flint. But flint come from the rock name also flint. That's why they call it flint. Okey. Ah uh, you tengok cerita kartun apa tu? Stone uh, Stone Age had, had apa nama dia? Saya tak ingatlah. So so this is flint. So previously human use this thing as a sharp edge to do all the stuff. Make a fire, batch the animal, cut the thing, and so on lah. So this flint. So this come from this what we call this flint stone. So you see the flint stone, if you see, is uh, homogeneous in nature. Homogeneous. So the way how you cut, they call it flint mapping. Mapping, eh? Mapping. So this way, Taufik, what Taufik does is that the name is flint mapping. Okay. So that is here. Wait, what is it? But the problem with this is that it's uh, not really durable. Lah. It's strong, it's, it can be used, but then you cannot make it so sharp. And also, you cannot really control. You need to find, you really cannot control the, what we call, you can control the shape by slowly, but it's quite tedious lah to do it, to cut, to much of a height slowly, 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 but it's quite tedious. Lah. And any crack here will sort of like uh, compromise the entire thing. So, flint is okay, but uh, can be used. But um, human found better ways. Lah. When it comes to bronze age, human found uh, bronze. Okay, human found bronze. Bronze is basically what? Copper plus tin. Eh? Tin. Eh? Uh, plus tin. Okay. So, how they get copper? How actually they get copper here? Nah, saya tak boleh copy paste. Lah. Saya copy paste ni. You, you, you imagine, eh? I take this, I copy, I put here. Okay. So imagine, eh? <laughs> I don't to use this. Okay, so copper and tins. How people get copper at all? Rock, eh? Rock, uh, copper, all. But they are, the name of the rock is malakite, eh? Malakite. They got from malakite. Malakite rock. So if I do here, and I put malakite, Normally, this rock have this greenish, greenish texture, malakite. So you can see the, okay. So this, something like this lah, malakite. So you have this uh, one of the characters of the malakite. Malakite rock is basically you have uh, greenish, greenish like this, okay, greenish, greenish like this. So there are only certain, um, not only lah. Um, there are certain places that have a lot of this. Okay, there are certain places that have a lot of this. So how they get a uh, copper out of this? Uh, because copper, when they react with the oxygen in the atmosphere, they create copper oxide. Okay, this is why uh, you get this copper oxide is on the what call uh, on the rock lah, the greenish thing. Okay, so you want to extract that. So the way how they get copper is basically to extract the copper from the malachite rock. So malachite rock we call it uh, the other ways. The easy way, we call it ore lah. Ore lah, copper ore. Copper ore. Or, you know, in the previous class, we said ore meaning that the natural stone lah. So, this natural stone, malachite, have a lot of copper inside that. So, how they do it, they want, they will extract this thing. How they do the extraction, is basically they just burn the thing. They take the rock, that's rock, and then they make small, they, they crush it. They crush, 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 they crush. And then what they do is that, they put in the pit, and then let's say this, yeah. Let's say this, and then they, eh, mana saya punya hitam? Eh, green lah. Ada green, green sikit. Green, 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 will basically uh, uh, remove okay because here um, because 
how they create fire because in order to create fire you need three things eh? you need three things triangle of fire you need a uh, heat you need the fuel and you need the oxygen oxygen betul ke ni you need fuel oxygen and also heat heat ke fuel oxygen and heat you need three things in order to make fire wait ah i need to check i also don't remember fire triangle fire triangle Ah, tu dia. Heat. Ah, betul lah. Heat, oxygen and fuel. Okay. So, the, in order to make this fire, uh, the early Ancestor, they use carbon. Eh? Use car carbon from charcoal. From charcoal. Charcoal is basically just uh, wood that you burn in without oxygen. Mean that you have wood here. And then you chop, 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 chop here. And then you burn it. You burn it. But at the same time, you you... You letak dalam tanah. Apa macam mana? Nak ayat ambil air dia. You macam burn in, uh, beauty inside the... Whatever lah. Meaning that is... Is... What we call? It try to burn without the oxygen. Okay? Of course, you need oxygen. But then, after... It's like when you make a BBQ lah. You make BBQ, you... What we call? You hembus apa? Hembus. You blue in order to make the fire upright. So, this is as if you don't blue. You just burn and then you left it there and then you after it uh, seems like burn then if you close the thing so you get the charcoal eh? charcoal so charcoal full of carbon full of carbon is a good source of uh, fuel lah, for the combustion so now when you burn this thing you have charcoal eh? charcoal so you have carbon eh? so if you if you burn charcoal you get carbon oxide carbon monoxide this is carbon monoxide eh? carbon monoxide and inside this because this is material science for chemical engineers so i need to go inside also the chemical lah. so this you have because it's like copper ore so you have copper ferrum 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 apa ferrum ferrum oxide lah because ferrum when you have a readily available outside here you have like ferrum oxide lah so you have ferrum two three like this Ferrum, let me put here. Ferrum 2 or 3. So, this ferrum oxide is basically the copper ore lah. Because the copper doesn't uh, exist. It's readily uh, absorb the surrounding air. So, you have copper ore combined with the CO2. So, what will happen? CO plus ferrum 2 O3, you get what? You get CO2 plus ferrum and you get two ferrum lah two ferrum two ferrum plus co2 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 you have co ferrum macam three tu three co2 lah three co2 you have three three co2 and then co you have like three lah Three also lah, you have three. So you uh, balance the equation. So this what we call the stoichiometric equation. So this is the chemistry behind of this. Even though it's simple, you just burn it. But you need to understand for the chemistry part, you need to understand why you can extract the ferrum. So this extraction by chemistry lah. The chemistry here, the extraction process here is just heating it. So you have carbon monoxide happen because from the carbon, when you burn, you get carbon monoxide lah. And then... You react with this, uh, what you call, the copper ion, copper ore, and then you get the, uh, eh, tu iron, tu kan copper. <laughs> copper je nak copper? Ha? CU, ha? sama lah CU oxide, whatever CU, uh, copper, uh, but more or less the same lah. CU, CU, whatever the thing. Okay? More than same. Because the same idea also is used for, what call, for steel, for whatever lah. The idea, ialah, the idea is basically they use uh, carbon monoxide from the fuel. And then this carbon monoxide will bind with the oxygen in the oxide. Because this is, the ore is basically typically the oxide of the metal. Metal from the sky, the meteorite is pure lah. Because in the sky, there are no oxygen in the vacuum, right? So that's why when you see when people take the make something from the meteor you get 
it's easy because you have the pure copper or pure iron, a pure iron, so you don't need to extract. But when you find this iron or copper on Earth, because Earth have atmosphere, copper and iron readily bind with that oxygen, create the oxide. So that oxide, they they call ore, ore. Copper or iron, they basically they what we call, they readily bind with the oxygen. So in order to remove the oxygen, in order to get the copper or iron, you need to sort of like do something to extract. So one way is to burn the fuel that have the carbon, uh, because you want to make the light. You uh, you want to make apa? Fire. You need fuel lah. So use carbon because uh, it's easily available from the wood. And then the carbon, when you burn it, you get uh, release the carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide will combine with this uh, oxide, the metal oxide. You can extract the copper out or iron out or whatever the thing. So that's basically uh, the, the, the why people do this. Lah. Okay. So how people extract. Lah. How people extract copper. So people might, uh, you might ask, where is this copper coming from? Eh? Copper inside the wire coming from this time. So like that lah. But nowadays, they just go quarry, go to the quarry. Let's say uh, copper quarry. Ada tak copper quarry? Siapa tak tahu? Copper quarry. Okay, so don't know. Ha, like that. Okay. So they just go to the quarry and then they just uh, detonate the thing. They just use boom, detonate the thing and then they have the sepihan apa sepihan? Sepihan apa sepihan? They got the what we call a lot of small small rock, and then they put in the in the truck, and then they bring the truck to the facilities, the factories, and in the factories they burn in the furnace. So the same idea, and you get the, basically the extract. So that is the way how people you get the copper, this copper because you cannot find this copper on the inside the earth. It doesn't work like this. You need to extract in order to get this copper. Okay, so now uh, the problem now during this Bronze Age. Okay, during this Bronze Age, people also already uh, what we call already. Apa orang kata? The iron is already there, but then people don't know how to make the fire so hot to melt the iron. Okay, this thing, everything here, the name, the act of burning thing. The act of burning metal oxide to get the to extract, we call it smelting. Eh? Smelting. Smelting. This is basically the term lah, smelting. So if you put smelting here, smelting, 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 smelting. Ah, you get this thing. Can have you ever see this thing in the video or whatever? You can yeah. you see. A big, big thing and it's color like this. Though this is what happened in industry. They don't use, uh, they don't do a small scale. Lah. They just bring all the, what we call, you see, they put all the ore inside this and then they throw inside the fire. Like that. Lah. So like that. That is smelting. The name is smelting. The problem during this time, the Bronze Age, is that copper is not scattered. Meaning that you can find a lot of copper here, but not here. A lot of copper there, not here. Same with the tin. Tin also is the outside also. Uh, I mean that coming from the stone lah. But different stone lah. Um, basically, they come from the caserite. 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 The, 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 the name for the stone. Ada tak nama dia? Caserite. 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 Ha, tu the stone. Betul ke? Kan betul ke caserite? Uh, ya. Yeah. That's right. So basically, same like a copper, you need to do the thing. Ah, okay? Major all of the thing. So that's the thing. So now coming from... Okay, the problem with this, tin and copper is... Uh, even though it's easy to make, it's not easy. Meaning that at this point, people, the civilization, already have the technique to, to make a fire hot enough to melt this thing. Because in order to melt, you need to not... Typical fire like this. Okay, how how hot is this? Huh? Arina, how hot is this? If you have temperature, how hot is this? I want to know. It. I want to see whether you know or not. How hot is this? Yeah. 
Imagine lah, imagine. How hot is this in the candle? You have candle? How hot is that? Candle lah, candle. How hot is that? Huh? Aminul, berapa? Berapa hot? 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 Berapa Temperature of candle. Candle. Let's see the gambar. Ah, tu. So you see the temperature berada dalam Celsius. Ah, dalam Celsius. Thousand plus, ah. Thousand. It's not. It's not. You think this? Ah, because you see, it's not hot because you use with the thermometer. You see your head, and you see this flame is so small, but it's hot. This. It's thousand, but you don't feel very hot. Not very hot. You feel hot, but then you don't feel it damage your thumb because it's small fire. You and you put it only just very little. But the temperature of that is thousand four hundred thousand lah, roughly thousand. Thousand lah. So it's not like hundred. Hundred is boiling the water. The the gas that boil the water is more than hundred. The water. They have the heat capacity. Later on, you will learn about heat capacity. They able to store the heat. So the water temperature is hundred, but the gas below is not hundred. That's why uh, water uh, is good good absorber of heat. That's why when you go uh, to the pantai, per pantai, beach at night uh, after the hot summer. Eh, sini mana summer? Hot, 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 hot day. You will found that the the beach is not as cold as you in as you as you think. It's still hot a little bit because the the water absorb the temperature uh, during the day. So the water temperature is uh, still warm at night. But along the way, after pukul tiga, pukul empat, pukul lima malam, on next day. When you go to the beach in the morning, you see the water is cold because it's absorbed. It's not absorbed. It release the temperature during the night, lah. So water is good absorber of the temperature. So in order to what we call to heat the water until it's boiling, you need this temperature of the water 100 Celsius, lah. But this thing is not 100. It's more than 100. Okay. So that's the temperature. In order to to melt to smell. This thing you need more than that. You need around uh, near two thousand like that lah. Near two thousand. Mana gambar? Mana mana siapa ni? Saya tak nak. Saya nak gambar smelting cantik sikit. Ha. Baru nice dalam video. Anyway, so the problem with this is not because they don't have the iron. They they because the iron is more widely distributed. Okay, iron here. Is more widely distributed, distributed across the globe compared to the copper and tin. So this iron, they cannot use it. They can make a small, small thing, but they cannot make it as what we call as the in at the large scale because they don't have the skill to increase the temperature to the level that can melt the iron. Okay, melt the do this extraction thing lah. Okay, so it's not about because they don't have the iron. It's because they don't have the technique to produce the temperature high enough to do the smelting for the iron. So that's the reason. But once they know that, then the iron take over lah. Once they know the the way how to to do to increase the smelting thing, uh, typically the the difference is just the way how they uh, give the oxygen lah. Okay, so once they know that, then the iron Age start to occur lah, and as I said, the iron is just simply you have this ferrum instead of copperum, you have ferrum here, so more or less like that. Okay, so I think in the next class we will continue about metal also, but for today you have learned about the CPMS we learned before. CPMS is about central paradigm for the material science, and we learned about 
uh, in that in that case we have four four apa? four four stages lah uh, processing structure and then apa properties and the performance all of this is linked and we have story before that uh, the properties of something intimately related to the structure inside like this thing eh? like this thing even though it's like a stainless steel but it's different because they change the uh, the atomic uh, structure inside lah i mean they add something else and so on and also we learn about what if let's say you have the choice of the material how do you decide which material to use so we learn that we have a characterization we have the what eh? deterioration and also lastly the economic economic typically the overriding factor lah in our daily life and and then lastly we learn about we we reflect back about this uh, the history of civilization we say that history of civilization mostly related to the material from stone bronze and iron age and we learn about how to extract the metal metal oxide because most of the metal readily uh, bind with the oxygen in the atmosphere so you need to do to extract it and how you need to do the smelting so we also see the difference between bronze and iron is not much the different the different only the skill of making the fire hot enough to smelt the iron and in the next class we will continue on the metal and that's it for today